2023 and at a place that is probably the most exciting. This is my friend Seth from Form Labs. What's going on? The whole reason I'm here, Seth, is because on Twitter, this was released and mentioned and Form Labs Auto, the automation for the Form 3. I was really excited to see it. And my buddy Jason from LDO Motors said, you really want to see that, don't you? And you know what he did? He sent me a few bucks. He said, I'm sponsoring your trip to the Form Labs booth. So Jason from LDO Motors, you are amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Jason. I was excited to see your tweet too. You know, we, when we launched, I was following all, all of the social media. I was hoping you would see it. Well, I was really excited because it looks simple. It's a, it's a very simple automation procedure that you've added, but that can save a tremendous amount of time. It's on a rotating turntable, so it's got three positions, two user positions here and here, so you can determine which uh, orientation you want the machine in, and then an automation position here. And then part of the reason we did this is because we wanted to keep the usability access of the uh, aspect of the Form 3 identical, right? So you still use the UI, the UI is exactly the same, changing your tanks is exactly the same. So if you're hooked up to a Form Auto, then the Form 3 itself could be used just as you used it before or with automation. Exactly, so if you ro rotate your printer here and you print on it, it's a normal printer. Can I add it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and if you rotate it into the automation position, it removes the job and kicks off the next print. And that's really like the core thing that this product does is it removes your print when it's done, it runs the next job. We, we have jobs that run in under an hour. You can queue up 24 jobs, hit go, come back 24 hours later and you'll have 24 hours of prints complete in the LightSafe bucket that you can go wash all at once. For all intents and purposes, it's a Form 3 and it works like a Form 3, but if you want to then enable the automation workflow, you can. We didn't want to make a new product that would require our users to buy another printer, right? They have printers that are working for them, workflows that work for them. So if you have a Form 3 and you buy Form Auto, it comes with a bracket at the top and a, and a plate at the bottom that you can really easily connect onto the machine. This enables you to create a group of printers. So let's say that the eight printers that we have here are all in a group, and if they're running the same material, you can have a queue of as many jobs as you want. As soon as a printer has finished a job, the top job in the queue will send to that printer. This is the... The, we can take it flex. out here if you want. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so this is BP2. Because this bends in this direction, parts that are oriented in this direction are stiff, they can't bend with the build platform, so they remove. That's, that's yeah. the primary mode of removal. But if I print a long bar this way, it's gonna remove easily. And if I print it this way, it won't. I'll just pop it like that. Don't, don't take all the fun, man. But I can run a demo removal here if you want. Yeah, let's do that, because I, I kind of want you to, to kind of take me through it. So essentially, the print gets done, hood lifts up, the magic hands of Form Auto come through, make the magic yeah. noise, parts drop into the little carrier that it has, yeah. and then it brings it back and puts it in the bucket. That's correct. The automation is it, purely part, it, part removal. It's just part removal. Right now, the parts drop into a Form Wash L basket, and you can move it directly into a Form, form Wash L. There you go. Okay. Yeah, so you're ready. I gotta put it. This is for a demo mode, right? In reality, the print ends and it just does this automatically. But in a second, what you'll see is the tool head is gonna home itself, the cover is gonna open, and then it's gonna enter and, and do a removal cycle. So it's, it's homing its motion. There so we go. Okay, it's opening the hood. It's coming in. Something you might be able to see here is that there's actually a webcam inside of this that's recording all of these removals and taking pictures of finished jobs so the customers can view them after the fact. How many times does it do that? Uh, we're doing five right now. Okay. Um, vast majority of parts remove on the first removal. If you looked right there, you saw the build platform press down slightly on the back of the uh, tool head. That's to ensure that the two are that it's actually scraping on the build platform. And if there are parts stuck on the build platform that didn't remove, it'll identify that it has a force sensor. And it says, oh, I haven't removed effectively. I'm going to go back in and try again. That's actually a really good question because there's a lot of different failure scenarios that you have to identify in automation. Some of them catastrophic in nature. There's Part not removing fully. There's pieces left in the tank. Yeah. How did you approach that? The build platform lowers down on top of the back wall of the tool head and it scrapes back. This accomplishes two things. It identifies if there are stuck parts and if there are, it will move back into position and attempt again a couple more times. Oh. At a certain point, it will fail out and say, come help me. It also will scrape off any small debris on the build platform. There's then a second layer of checks. So within the Form 3 tank, there is a wiper that, that wipes the resin, and that can also sense much smaller debris, both on the build platform and in the tank. Oh, so if something was stuck to the bottom of the tank, it could detect that with the wiper. That's correct. One thing that I think is really exciting about having multiples of these machines is that because they can identify failures, 
customers had the option to put the job right back into the queue and run on another machine. When I worked at Microsoft, we called it dog fooding, right? Yeah. Nightly builds of Windows that you would use and bug reports would be sent off to a war team and they would evaluate it. So you're quote unquote dog fooding your product. What is the official stance behind parts with uncured resin in the bucket? Yeah. So. This is obviously a great question, and it's basically the very first thing we tested. So as soon as we had this concept, we said, can we really just leave parts on top of each other like this? And so before we had built prototypes, we printed hundreds of jobs in different geometries and different materials, put them on top of each other, we, we dropped them on top of each other, and then left them two weeks, four weeks, six weeks to see what would happen in a light safe environment. Six weeks you went up to? It was just, I mean, they're just sitting there. It's not like any extra work, right? You leave them there. True. And so we'd take some out, we'd clean them, and we'd inspect them. We'd look at their mechanical properties. We'd look at their dimensional accuracy and we'd look at their surface finish. The short answer is uh, we were almost surprised by how well it works. It, it really doesn't cure together. At the end of the day, we, we need to block very specific wavelengths as a light and we do that with the top cover and the bucket. And Oh, so and where works. the parts drop, it is light sealed. Yes, yeah, so the, the bucket that you're looking at here and the top cover, we test both of those polymers across the whole wavelength of light that can cure our parts, and the spec that we have is 99.9% .9 blocking. If we had found that that wasn't an acceptable solution, we'd never have developed this product, or we would have done it in a very different way. We've also done similar extensive testing on fragile parts. So we have a number of torture tests that we run with very fine features pointing downwards to, to try to cause parts to break. Yeah. And again, like, you can create a part that when used in this machine will break. If you make a very heavy part with a very fine feature sticking down, it'll break. But in general, the parts are really robust when they come out of the printer and it isn't an issue. Well, automation is really defined uh, or is really efficient when the parts that you need to make are acceptable for automation. Like for yeah. example, I see a bunch of teeth down below and so dental molds are yeah. easily a use case for this. And, and this is a point, like I, I don't, I'm not going to stand here and say that every single print you run today is going to work perfectly here and that's why we have good failure detection. For anyone that's used BP2, you know that you can make small adjustments to your build to make it work more effectively with BP2. There's a bunch of people out there that are going to have a lot of questions about this, no doubt. They'll leave comments down below, but where can they go to find out more? There's the audience, let or, them know. Go to formlabs.com, find out more. You rehearsed that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Really have to practice it. Hey, dude, I appreciate the chat, yeah, and uh, I want to play with this more in the future. Yeah, yeah. It we'll, looks like uh, a lot of fun. We'll, we'll work on it. We'll do it. Dude, up top, man. Thanks, man. Thanks Happy CES. Back.